this is uh, part 15 and we will continue our discussion to understand provisions regarding abatement of an offence and then in the first lecture itself we learn there can be abatement by instigation, there can be abatement by conspiracy and there can be abatement by what is known as an intentional act. And then we started discussing provision regarding abatement by instigation where we refer to some of the provisions. In addition to this now, this is the time for me to draw your attention to explanation 1 as far as section 108 is concerned. We say the abatement of the illegal omission of an act may amount to an offence, although the abettor may not himself be bound by do to, bound by bound to do that act. So he is not bound by law. It's not his legal duty to do a particular thing. But then he can abet when so the abatement of the illegal omission of an act. So police officer is bound by law to arrest, no doubt about it. When somebody is accused of an offence of which nature is cognizable, but you private citizen is not bound by law. But when he has done such an act that instead of arresting a particular person, there will be uh, somebody has committed an offence and he has gone in a particular direction. And when he is asked by the police officer, you are asked by the police officer, and the person says he has gone entirely in different direction, though he is not bound by law to do that particular act, he is liable for illegal omission of an act though he is not bound by law to do that particular act, namely of arrest, is made very clear as far as the first explanation to section 108 is concerned. With this now, let me draw your attention to abetment by conspiracy which says, engages with one or more other person or persons in any conspiracy for the doing of that thing if an act or illegal omission takes place in persons of that conspiracy and in order to doing of that thing. So this is the persons they come together and as per the conspiracy one person has done an act which amounts to an offence. And this has got reference to the illustration with which I mean we started, uh, started understanding the provisions as far as uh, part 13 as far as our nature series is concerned. And there now if it happens A, B, C, D uh, meet in the morning and then it is for A, they have decided that A will go and kill Mr. Z. A goes and kills and all of them want, I mean, want to run away. Mr. A is the principal offender. He has committed the offence of murder as defined by section 300, whereas B, C and D, all of them are liable in what capacity? They have not directly done any of the committed any offence, but they are abetted. And what is this abetment? Abetment is by conspiracy. So this is the abetment by conspiracy. We will work out some details regarding conspiracy as soon as we proceed to the next chapter, where we shall be dealing with section 128 of the Indian Penal Code, which defines the offence of criminal conspiracy during course of time. But as far as the illustration with which we have started our discussion is concerned, this is liability. Liability of B is has committed the off B has abetted the offence by conspiracy. C has abetted the offence by conspiracy and D has also abetted the offence by conspiracy as far as this provision is concerned. Now, is it necessary, is it necessary that all those who conspire should come together? And the answer, it says, uh, is given as far as the fifth explanation to section 108 is concerned, it says, it is not necessary to the commission of the offence of abetment by conspiracy that the abettor should concert the offence with the person who commits it. It is sufficient if he engages in the conspiracy in pursuance of which the offence is committed. And for the purpose of for the purpose of understanding this, if I mean you read the illustration which has given which clearly says A concerts with BDFB a plan for poisoning Z. So he the A A and B has conspiracy to plan and in poison Mr. Z. It is agreed that A shall administer the poison. B then explains the plan to Mr. plans to C, mentioning that a third person is a person is to administer the poison, but without mentioning A's name. C agrees to procure the poison, 
and procures and delivers it to B for the pur purpose of its being used in the manner explained. A administers the poison to, poison to Z. He dies in Z dies in consequence. Here though A and C were have not conspired together, yet C has been engaged in the conspiracy in persons of which Z has been murdered. C has therefore committed the offence defined in this section and is liable for the for the punishment for murder. So this is it's not that all of them should should sit together. All of them decide uh, sit together and then decide. But and hence that is give, explained as far as fifth explanation to section 108 is concerned. With this now we come to the what do we mean by intentional aid? And it says. Thirdly, intentionally aids by any act or illegal omission to doing of that thing. And then for the purpose of knowing what is this intentional aid, if you read the explanation which is given, which uh, to section one, second explanation to section 107 says, who are either prior to or at the time of commission of an act does anything in order to facilitate the commission of that act and thereby facilitate the commission thereof is said to aid the doing of that act. So. This is what is meant by abetment by intentional aid. In order to understand what do you mean by intentional aid, if you take into consideration illustration where Mr. A wanted to commit the offence of bigamy defined by section 494, so he wanted to marry during the lifetime of the lifetime of his first his spouse, and then he, I mean, uh, he went along with the girl with whom he wanted to marry. He went to the place and he wanted some hall for the purpose of I mean, undergoing ceremony of a marriage. He invited and he engaged a caterer. He invited few persons over there and lastly he invited also the priest, priest because he wanted to marry as per the provisions of the Hindu marriage act. Now once I mean this offence has taken place, who has who is liable for the offence? Mr. A is liable for the offence, no doubt about it. But what is the liability of the, can it be said that there was a, there was intentional aid on the part of the person who allowed his hall to be used for the purpose of such marriage? Or those, I mean, caterers who supplied food or those who remained present for the purpose of marriage, for the purpose of having food over there, or the priest. And then, if you read explanation very clearly, it says, who are either prior to or at the time of commission of an act does anything in order to facilitate the commission of that act and thereby facilitates the commission thereof is said, is said to aid the doing of that act. This is intentional. In other words, in the absence of that act, in the absence of that aid, if it would not have been possible for him to do an act which amounts to an offense, that is exactly what do you mean? This can be done either prior to or at the time of commission of an act, and this is exactly what is exactly what is meant by uh, abet the abetment by uh, intention A. And hence now, in the illustration that I had given, if the person would not have given hall for the purpose of going through a ceremony of such ma marriage as per section 494, the, he would have gone some other to some other place. If the caterer would not have supplied him with the food, he would have gone or if nobody would have eaten that, he would have distributed it to the beggars. But he, in the absence of priest, it would not have been possible for him to, uh, to undergo a ceremony of a marriage which amounts to an offence and it is only the priest who has abetted the, uh, abetted the offence by what is known as intentional aid without priest as we are talking about him marriage as per the personal law, it would not have been possible and hence that is the liability or that is the explanation when you read sec, uh, second explanation to section 107, 107 which deals with abetment, what do you mean by intentional aid. So now there can be a situation where, there can be, imagine a situation where the quarrel is going, going on between A and B. Then, the first of all, they start with hot exchange of words, which ultimately resulted into hot exchange of blows. And then, what happened? Mr. Z, who was standing there, picked up a stick that was available and handed it over to Mr. B. 
when the call was exchange of exchange of blows was going on now what mr what he has done what mr z has done mr z mr if a uses the stick and gives one blow to mr b mr z has instigated mr a to use that stick and also there is a intentional a in that sense of stick it would not have been possible for him to give a blow because he z handed over stick to mr a so this is overlapping this is abetment by intentional a and this is also abetment by what is known as instigation as far as the provisions regarding abetment is concerned with this now the once i mean once we try to as i mean if you go to section 108 which says a person a person abets an offense who abets an offense who abets either the commission of an offense or the commission of an act which would be an offense is committed by a person capable of law of committing an offense with the same intention or knowledge as that of the abettor so this is i mean the who is an abettor and then we have dealt with i mean as uh, so far we have dealt with section 107 we have dealt with two explanations to the section we have dealt with section 108 along with five explanations to the section now this is the time where we have to i mean think of a case where mr abet can there be abetment in india of offenses outside in india and yes because of section 108a this says a person abets an offense within the meaning of this code who in india abets the commission of any act without and beyond india which would constitute an offense if committed in india so there can be an abetment beyond the territorial limits of india as per section 108a as per as this chap this chapter is concerned with this now the to understand further further provisions which are very uh, uh, which are must uh, think of a case where a has instigated mr b to go and set fire to the building of mr c a instigates mr b to go and set fire to the building of mr c now this is setting fire amounts to mischief by fire so a wanted mr b to commit the offense of mischief by fire yes and he instigated him when mr b went there before he decided to set fire to the building uh, he saw some some valuables and he committed before setting fire to the building he committed theft with respect to those things now liability of mr b is b has committed the offense of theft and b has also committed the offense of mischief by fire what is the a's liability is the question for our consideration or in a case where a had instigated mr b to go and commit theft while taking away the property was obstructed by the owner he gave two blows to the owner and came back hence he had committed the offense of theft and he has also committed the offense of voluntarily causing hurt what is liability of mr a is the question for our consideration and in order to un understand this the provisions that you have refer you are supposed to refer to is section 111 section 112 and section 113 as per as this chapter is concerned out of which section 111 says liability of abettor when one act abetted and a different act is done and it says when an act is abetted and a different act is done the abettor is liable for the act done in the same manner and to the same extent as if he had directly abetted it but then proviso says provided the act done was a probable consequence of the abetment and was committed under the influence of the instigation or with the aid or in persons of conspiracy which constituted the abetment so this is act if you instigate to do one act and if he has done another act unless that is natural and probable consequence of the act abetted the question of liability doesn't arise so when a instigates mr b to go and set fire and if b has committed theft mr a is only liable as far as the instigation as far as the mischief by fire is concerned because uh, theft is not i mean natural and probable consequence of act 
Whereas if you ask somebody, if you instigate somebody to commit theft and he has been caught red handed because of which he wanted to run away, in such a case for example, this is a, if he has given a blow, this is a natural and probable consequence of that. With this now, if you read section 112, it says the abettor when liable to cumulative punishment for act abetted and for act done. And it says, if the act for which the abettor is liable under the last preceding section is committed, in addition to the act abetted and constitutes a distinct offense, the abettor is liable to the punishment for each of the offenses, as I mean uh, laid down as far as section 112 is concerned. Now section 113 says liability of abetor for an act for an e for an effect caused by act abetted different from that intended by the abetor and it says when an when an act is abetted with the intention on the part of the abetor of causing a particular effect and an act for which the abetor is liable in consequence of the abetment causes a different different effect from that intended by the abetor the abettor is liable for the effect caused in the same manner and to the same extent as if he had abetted the act with the intention of causing that effect provided he knew that the act abetted was likely to cause likely to cause that effect and then if you read the illustrations which are given as far as section 112 and 113 is concerned which will throw light if you if you understand one principle what is that if one act is averted and entirely different act is committed what is the or if the act, different act is done what is the liability as far as the abetor is concerned will entirely depend upon whether the act which was done by him whether it was natural and probable consequence of the act averted is to be taken into consideration accordingly and for example as I mean, if you read section 112 illustration, it says A instigates B to resist, B, resist by force or distress made by my, a public servant. B in consequence resists at that distress. In offering the resistance, B voluntarily causes grievous hurt to the, to the officer executing the, the distress. As B has committed both the offense of resisting the distress and offense of voluntarily causing grievous, uh, grievous hurt, B is liable to punishment for both these offenses and if A knew that B was likely voluntarily to cause grievous hurt in resisting the distress, A will be A will also be liable to punishment for each of the offenses. And as far as section 113 is concerned, it's, the illustration says A instigates B to cause grievous hurt to Z, B in consequence of the instigation causes grievous hurt to Z, Z ties in consequence. Now here, if A knew that the grievous hurt averted was likely to cause death, A is liable to be punished with the punishment provided for the provided for murder. With this now, what happens? A instigates B. A instigates B uh, to kill Mr. C and uh, Mr. A is present. Namely, abettor is present at the scene of the offense. Maybe maybe abetment or A and B conspire. B goes and then A remains present at the, at the time when B was about to commit offense or A has given revolver to Mr. B for the purpose of killing Mr. C and A remains present at the time when the offense is committed. In other words, if the abettor would not have would not have been present at the time when the offense has taken place, his liability would have been as an abettor. Now he is present at the scene of the offense. What is his liability? And section 114 says, Whenever any person who if absent would be liable to be punished as an abettor, he is present when the act or offence for which he would be punishable in consequence of the abetment is committed, he shall be deemed to have committed such act or offence. So abettor shall be deemed to have committed that offence and hence the punishment varies accordingly. Punish the punishment whether abetor is present at the scene of the offence or not, as far as section 114 is concerned. So that is, I mean, that speaks about liability of the abetor at the scene of the, at the place where the offence has taken place accordingly. Now, with this, now section 109 deals with punishment of abetment if the act abetted is committed in consequence and where no no express provision is made for its punishment. So that is the punishment which is laid down. 
section 110 deals with punishment of abatement if the person abated does act with different intention from that of the abator is laid down. Section 115 says abatement of offense punishable with death or imprisonment for life. What is the punishment that can be inflicted by the court of law in such a case? Section 116 deals with abatement of offense punishable with imprisonment if the offense be committed. Section 117 deals with abating commission of offense by public or by more than 10 persons. What is the, li what is the liability? Whereas section 118 deals with concealing design to commit offense punishable with death or imprisonment for life. And then section 119 says public ser servant concealing design to commit offense which it is his duty to prevent. And then last section 120 deals with concealing design to commit offense punishable with imprisonment. So these are the sections which deal with punishment. So this is regarding abatement which may be by instigation, abatement which may be by conspiracy or which may be what is known as an intention aid. Act abated need not be committed is only applicable if you read the ingredients of the section you will come to know. Only as a second explanation to section 108 is only applicable as far as abatement by instigation is concerned. With this now, this is I mean the li this is the li li liability of the person and what is who is he? He is an uh, abator. So what is I mean when we started discussing with the provisions regarding abatement we learned abatement is not an offense but abatement of an offense is an offense. So these are these are the various aspects that are required to be taken into consideration to understand the provision regarding abatement of an offense. We will now proceed to the next part.